I'm outside right now. I'm unfe I'm undefeated tonight. 2 and 0. Oh. 3 really cuz when niggas see me they fucking just pulled off. Don't drive off when y'all see me outside. I'm outside, my I'm outside right now, nigga. I'm outside right now. Working on a weekend like usual. Way off in the deep end like usual. Niggas swear they passed us, they doing too much. Haven't done my taxes, I'm too turned up. Virgil got a paddock on my wrist going nuts. Niggas caught me slipping once, okay, so what? Someone hit the block up, I tell you if it was us. Man, a house in Rosewood, this shit too plush. Bitch, this is fame, not clout. I don't even know what that's about, watch your mouth. Maybe got an ego twice the size of the crib. I can never tell the shit it is what it is. Yeah, it ain't safe outside right now. Don't beat no cars up when you see a nigga sleeping. I'm outside. Definitely it was. And as we're on the theme of Tyson Fury, um, I spoke to his UK promoter, Frank Warren, a few days ago. Um, I'm sure you'd have seen his comments. As his US promoter, I'll get your thoughts on his comments as well. So he said, due to Dylan White's arbitration case that's going on, uh, where the, there's a hearing in March, I believe, um, Tyson Fury is looking to fight in March, but with no WBC title on the line. Can you make any comment on that, please? Well, it's unfortunate in the sense that Dylan White uh, could have that fight. And uh, there's no question but that uh, we would do that fight. But, I mean, they're, uh, in our view, very greedy with what they're asking. Okay, fight fans, I want to stop him right there. So, he says that, you know, Dylan White has an arbitration coming up in March. And they should just go ahead and go through with the fight. Well, if you've suffered injustice for damn near 4,000 days and they just want you to go through with the fight and nobody knows the outcome of, fight, of a fight, why would you do that? If I was Dillian White and I was in his position, I would be looking for some sort of compensation as well. It's easy for the other guys to say that you're being very greedy when the other guys have been the ones screwing you along the entire time working with Mauricio Suleiman and he's only and solely been working in your favor, flipping the mandatory status on and off of its head just to screw and prolong Dillian White's activity so the Wilder match can go through and so many other things. So, of course, they would look at it from that direction. But let's continue. I mean, particularly in the age of the pandemic, where you don't really know what kind of spectators you can get, or like at the last Tyson Fury fight, where we did the event and we did a great game, well, it would have been even bigger if we had the UK fans there, which they, could, they couldn't go because of the travel ban in the United States. So, I mean, we've offered them a big, good deal, a purse deal, far more than they've ever uh, gotten in any fight. So he's being greedy, and you guys have offered him a purse deal far more than he's gotten in any fight. So whom? I would like you to elaborate on that deal, Mr. Aram, and how much you're offering, since it far exceeds more than Dillian White's ever received in any fight. Let's go there. Uh, and that hasn't moved them. So, I mean, we've talked to the head of the uh, WBC, Mauricio Suleiman, and he said, look, it breaks my heart, but go find another opponent, uh, fight without the WBC title, and we're not going to take it away from you uh, and uh, go about your business. Uh, Dylan White really and his people should come to the table and make the deal to fight Tyson Fury. Period. End of story. Uh so, as top ranks promoter and as spokesperson for Tyson Fury at the same time, you decide what's best for Dylan White. No, sir! This makes absolutely no sense. Another thing. I remember back in July, Tyson Fury said he had no interest in fighting Dillian White and he'd be willing to drop the belt. Didn't your fighter say that? Oh, if you don't remember, let me go ahead and jog your memory. 
Fury hints that he would drop the WBC title. He's not interested in fighting Dillian White. WBC heavyweight champion Tyson Fury said he's made it clear that he will not be forced by the World Boxing Council or anyone else to make a mandatory defense against Dillian White. Uh, uh, that's not likely to happen. So they're going to play out the arbitration. Uh, and uh, Frank and I, Frank Warren and I are looking for another opponent to do uh, Fury's fight uh, in, in Manchester. Uh, or uh, in Las Vegas. Now, fight fans, I want you to understand something. Bob Arum and uh, Frank Warren ain't talking about doing a um, Fury one-off fight with no belt because that's what they want to do. They're talking about doing it because Dillian White has filed that arbitration. So they ain't going through shit with that WBC belt considering that his mandatory status has been in limbo and I'm sure that's a major part of the grievance. We all know that's a major part of Dillian White's grievances and we could have avoided this if the WBC would have done their jobs. Now I find it funny that they're talking this when we know that the WBC automatically changed their tune and decides to implement Dillian White as the man, as mandatory status once he files that arbitration. And that's why they're speaking like this, because they're trying to force Dillian White's hand like we don't know or we're not smart enough to understand that they're reeling simply because the WBC made bonehead crooked decisions and now they're trying to force Dillian White into a situation with some chump ass change on you? his um, on his benefit on his behalf, excuse me. How dare you? Because they all the way fucked up. They're not doing this because this is the only, because they have options. No, sir! They're doing this because this is their only option. Now, fight fans, you guys just seen how I had the arrow pointing to, it was December of 2021, when they implemented and made Dillian White mandatory. Now, this article is from November 19th of 2021. Shout out to Sports News. They said Dillian White will sue the WBC, namely the obligatory challenger for Tyson Fury has not been determined. If you're sure something is going to happen, and that has to do with a rather chaotic WBC boxing organization, it is a recommendation to discard that safety right away. Once again, it has been shown that once the most respected boxing body has a habit to or need to make vague moves. The aforementioned WBC convention had an agenda item according to which mandatory category challengers were to be determined. One of the short ones there was supposed to be Dillian White. Namely, unlike most certain mandatory challengers, who only hold the first position in their rankings, White has the interim championship belt. He has been holding it since July of 2019. And winning over Oscar Rivas, with a few months of exception, while he was with Alexander Povetkin. But it can be said that the position that should guarantee him the status of mandatory challenger has a year earlier and a victory over Joseph Parker. As there are currently no obstacles in the way of organizing the match between the WBC champions Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua, nor is there any clause that would reintroduce Deontay Wilder into the story. Which is why White has been left out in recent cases. There really seems to be no reason why Dillian White would not finally get the status that belongs to his results, after which it would be an obligation to start negotiations. Sue. Still the WBC managed to ignore him once again. Namely, the obligatory challenger for Tyson Fury has not been determined and the reasons they stated just sounds interesting. The WBC has revealed that they are not legally able to do so as long as white and they are under litigation that is under the legal process. In the beginning, it's not clear what this is. 
about. But now there is more and more information without accurate information on when this actually happened. It was revealed that White decided to fight his position legally. So after three years of ignoring, he took everything to the court. He sued the WBC for denying him the opportunity he deserves with his status. We can assume that he may have been motivated by the move of Deontay Wilder, who just won the third match against Tyson Fury in court, also for the WBC heavyweight title. But here it is clearly counterproductive. Very little information is known about the trial. So it is not known at what stage it is and when it can be concluded. One thing is clear, the WBC once again played white, this time perhaps the most painful. Of course Dillian White can always withdraw his lawsuit, but he will not be designated as a mandatory challenger until the next WBC summit can be organized extra extraordinarily and even through online services like Zoom or Skype, but it seems to us that this situation absolutely suits them. Fury has already said that the match against White does not seem to interest him. Excuse me, does not seem interesting to him. And that he is looking at some other options. So fight fans, I've already dispelled that bullshit narrative. I've showed you, you know, that the WBC were never trying to play ball with Dillian White and they only pressed the button after Dillian White sued. So what Bob Aram feeding y'all is a bunch of bullshit. You can't listen to him, Tyson Fury, or Fish Fish Eyed. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Dory looking ass Frank Warren. No, sir! These are facts. In Las Vegas, depending on who the opponent is. So we're looking at uh, Andy Ruiz as a possibility. He's available. This big uh, Finnish kid who uh, looked very good in the semi wind up uh, on the fight uh, on the, the Fury Wild of, uh, uh, card. Uh, uh, Hellenius, big, big uh, Finnish uh, kid who, who can really fight. Uh, and those are the two principal guys. I guess if it's Alinius, we do it in, uh, in the UK. And if it was uh, uh, Ruiz, we do the fight in Las Vegas because uh, uh, Fury has endeared himself so much to the American fan base uh, that wherever I went, uh, uh, this. Uh, Christmas, uh, I was up in uh, Aspen, and everybody was talking about Tyson Fury and what a character he is. Promotional Rhetoric 101, I'm sure the only people were talking about how much of a character Tyson Fury was were the individuals that he went to Aspen with and how they were just sharing some fucking funny moments with Tyson Fury. I'm sure no rich people to fucking, uh, in Aspen were running around talking to Bob Arum about frickin' Tyson Fury. These are facts. That motherfucker ain't moving no tickets like that, bro. Let's cut the crap. Do I need to go and show you that again, too? I don't think I really need to do that. In terms of Dylan White and his situation, obviously himself and Eddie Earn are asking for a, a 45% split. How do you think the arbitrator is going to see this, Bob? I, you know, I, again, I don't, I, I, you know, I believe that from what I know about the case, uh, that he doesn't have much of a case. Stop the cap. <laughs> Stop the cap right now. Stop the cap. Not much of a case. And what he should do is now come to the table and work out a deal for the fight to happen. Uh, you know, I'd like that fight to happen, happen in the UK. Frank has a place in Cardiff that we can put it on. Uh, and, uh, you know, if he thinks he can win, which I assume he doesn't, but if he thinks he can win, let him win and become the WBC champion. Stop crapping around uh, with the arbitration and uh, looking to push for the biggest dollar. Uh, you know, uh, Tyson is the big attraction. 
Nobody has heard in the United States of Dylan White, really. Yo, y'all really got to do research and not listen to these dudes. So nobody's heard of Dillian White, Bob, right? And Tyson Fury's the bigger attraction, correct? Well, I do believe when Tyson Fury bought Vladimir Klitschko, he got paid like four to five million at 50% of the pay-per-view upside for that fight. When Dillian White fought fucking Vladimir, I mean, Alexander Povetkin the first time during the pandemic when no fans could even be in the arena. He got four million with 50% of the pay-per-view upside. And one more thing. You said nobody really knows who Dillian White is, correct? Nobody knows who he is in the States. How dare you? Nobody knows him. No, sir! So, why the fuck are you guys begging him to do promotion for the fucking fight? And why is Tyson Fury doing shit like this. A few moments later. I just heard that little sausage Dylan White wants paying to turn up to a press conference. You little silly, fat sausage. You get in that, coward. Hey, fight fans. Nobody knows who Dillian White is. Nobody knows who Dillian White is. Hmm. I find that funny. Since Tyson Fury is the draw and nobody knows him, why can't Tyson Fury sell the fight? You guys are paying him more money than he's ever made in his career, correct? At five, five million at 25%. What a fucking joke, Slob Aram. What a fucking joke, Slop Rank. Are you kidding me? And y'all expect him to do some groundwork on what behalf? Man, this is some bullshit! Y'all think you guys are offering him so much. It's absolutely hilarious. We've got the legendary promoter, the so-called big draw Tyson Fury, and the other legendary promoter begging the little guy to promote the fight. Since nobody knows him, he's a little guy, right? Right? In the United States of Dylan White, really. Uh, and uh, I think we've offered him a deal uh, of uh, uh, twenty-five percent with a guarantee, uh, and uh, let him negotiate for that. But again, he says he wants uh, uh, eight figures, you know, over ten million, which is like out of the question. I don't know what he's talking about. Okay. Is it hard to, to negotiate at the moment? Obviously, though, because the WBC haven't determined the split. So, is that a problem at the moment? No, the WBC, you, you know, would be talking about a 20 or 25 percent for the challenger and 75, 80 or 75 percent for the uh, uh, for the uh, for the champion. But let him come to the table with a with an, a, a normal, you know, type of negotiation. Not saying that he wants. Uh, See, this old senile bastard is letting you know exactly how far in bed he is in with the WBC in this situation because I have the WBC mandatory challenger purses according to the WBC's rules. Now let me read that for you guys. A few moments later. 2-12. Division of proceeds and a purse officer. The net purse officer, after deduction of the WBC certification fees, shall be divided as follows 70% for the champion and 30% for the challenger. 50% to each contender in case of vacant titles or elimination bouts. C. 55% to the champion, 45% to the interim champion in the event of such a bout. D. Notwithstanding the terms of subparagraphs A, B, and C above, the Board of Governors may, in its discretion, and by a majority vote, modify the decision of the purse of the proceeds between the boxers and the purse offer in an unusual or special cases. Like the consideration of the outstanding marketing value of one of the boxers. The modification of the split will be limited to three categories, 70-30, 60-40, or 55-45 for the champion and challenger, respectfully, except in most exceptional circumstances in which the split may be modified to 
SoFi fans, in what way is five million and twenty-five percent even correct? How do you already have this stuff worked out, Mauricio Suleiman? And the fact that Dillian White is an interim champion, for him to be getting paid what they are trying to pay him is a direct fuck you and a slap in the face, and I damn sure wouldn't be going for it. Just let's sit down and have a Zoom call and see if. This sounds like when you owe somebody money and you've been ducking them for a hot minute and the motherfucker pull up on you and you know he ready to whoop your ass and the nigga's like, man, let's just sit down, man, and let's have a drink, man, and let's talk about this and let's get through it. Hey, get the fuck out of here. See if we can put it together. No, sir! Because nobody wants litigation, you know? You and the WBC don't want litigation because honestly, Y'all don't want this fucking fight. No, you know, just as soon fight Dylan White as Salinas or Andy Ruiz and get it done. And if White thinks he can beat uh, Fury, then, uh, he, you know, nobody's asking him for any options or continuation. Then he's a free agent and the world champion then he can do a unification with the winner of uh, Usyk and Joshua. I mean, you know, but uh, but I, I'm afraid they're looking at this as their last hurrah, and they want to grab as much money as they can. Well, fight fans, this thing has run about 21 minutes, so I'm going to just go ahead and end it there. As you can see, I've already pointed out and exposed all of the lies and all of the bullshit. Dillian White should continue to do what do what's doing. Excuse me, to do what Dillian White has been doing because after this arbitration is over, Tyson Fury's still going to be fighting him, or he's going to be vacating like a coward. There's nothing to it. What Bob Arum and freaking Frank Warner trying to do with these straw man conversations and shit like that, bro? Nobody gives two fucks. They don't hold any cards here. They're trying to save face for that good old butt-fucking relationship that they have with the WBC who's put them in this position to where they can make the most money and they could benefit most from this situation in a fight to where Tyson Fury truly feels like he can lose, a fight that Tyson Fury never really wanted. No, sir! In a fight that Tyson Fury would rather not have. He's expressed it several times, so what has changed so much in that situation? I'll tell you, Dillian White's arbitration. So fight fans, as we always say at the end of this shit, it costs you nothing to pay a nigga no mind. It's the motherfucking boss. Exposing these fuck boys, one bitty at a time. Respect.